Today we're going to look at a Vizio MQ8 TV teardown. <laughs> so there's our crack in the pixels. Hey folks, today we're going to tear down a Vizio MQ8 TV. This is an LCD TV with a quantum dot film inside. So we're going to look at that quantum dot film and its optical properties. We're also going to look at some broken LCD pixels and some full array local dimming and the LEDs behind that. So I hope you enjoy it. So here's our TV that I acquired on Facebook Marketplace. Broken, of course, so it was nice and cheap. You can see that even when I turn it on, we have almost no light coming through. There's a pretty severe broken part to this TV, um, but the backlight does still work, which is important, as you'll see later. And you can see some of the light coming through the broken LCD. So here my friend Steve and I start to take off the back cover on this TV. Uh, we weren't super careful because we knew the TV was broken and we were not going to put it back together. So we get inside the rear cover and you can see here power supplies and drivers and um, all the electronics that that run the TV. Here we have the infrared receiver for the remote, as well as these ribbon cables that connect to the LCD. And these are kind of interesting because they have a unique clip on them. There's, it's generally two-sided on these big TVs. You've got it split in half. So you carefully unlock these ribbon cables. Now, we would be much more careful if we were intending on saving the LCD or repairing it or something like that. Uh, we'd be using gloves and things like that, but we're not. So a lot more screws to take off the frame here. Um, and <clears throat> then we flip the TV over um, and you can see that the LCD is still held on with this really pretty strong adhesive here. So to remove this adhesive, we apply a little bit of heat that helps loosen up the adhesive some, and then we can get underneath that and pry it up a little bit better. We did end up breaking some of the, some more of the LCD by doing this. So actually what ended up, working much better was just to cut it because you can see the uh, the molding here, the frame around the edge of the TV, which holds everything together, holds the LCD in place, really starts to come apart nicely. So we do that on both sides of the TV and you can start to see the LCD coming up, up here. It's, it's quite flexible, especially considering it contains multiple layers of glass. Um, it actually behaves a little bit more like a flexible plastic than it does glass, but obviously it is fragile. So here we've got the LCD fully removed. We're going to flip it over, put it over here for storage. And you can see in the corner of it there where some of it's peeling up. And this is really interesting. We just took a desk lamp and shine underneath the LCD and you can see light coming through on this video, which is kind of purplish pink. In real life, you could almost see no light coming through. It's very pale. Um, so the iPhone camera, I think, is picking up some of the infrared light. And with this loop, we can look down even closer at the pixels and zoom in, and you can really see. These are closed pixels, but light is still getting through. Shows you how the LCD pixels are imperfect. And then we go back to the rest of the display here. So now we're into what we call the backlight unit, the BLU of the TV. This is where the light engine is and all the optical films. Most LCDs have a series of two, three, four optical films. And so that works, that's what we're going to look at here. This top film, uh, we're going to take a laser pointer and shine it through there. And you can see it kind of um, diffuses that laser light a little, bit, a little bit, even splits it apart. And actually, if you go in reverse, it's quite telling as to what type of film this is. Uh, there's various different names for these. Some are called brightness enhancing films, dual brightness enhancing films prism films, um, and you can see that the second film that's in there actually splits the light in the opposite direction. They also do play somewhat of a role in uh, recycling and um, polarizing the, the light. So here, the third sheet that's kind of yellow is our quantum dot film. Uh, so I, I really am interested in this. This is an area that I work in a lot. And we take a UV flashlight and shine it on this film, and that excites the quantum dots, and they fluoresce very bright. So here you can see it, it's fluorescing bright green. And here's a close up of all of the films that are in there. You've got LEDs in the back, a diffuser, which I haven't shown you yet. And then the optical films, including the quantum dot film. 
Now with the TV on, you can see the white light coming through. We start to take off the top optical film, top two optical films, and then we have the quantum dot film left and then the blue backlight unit. So I'm going to pull out my Avantes spectrometer here to measure the color of light that's coming off of the backlight unit only. So this is just blue LEDs and then a big thick plastic diffuser to make the light more uniform. So here's the blue optical spectrum. You can see it's centered around 450 nanometers. That's a typical blue LED signal. Now with the quantum dot film, what the quantum dot film is doing is converting that blue light into red and green, at least in part. And you can see here now a peak for green and a peak for red. And I've listed some of the important metrics here, especially the peak width, FWHM, the full width at half maximum. They're both well below 30 nanometers, which is very good. Um, and this confirms the quantum color that they provide in the spec sheet. Uh, it is quantum dots giving you the color in this TV, the red and green. So we put on the first optical enhancement film, and you can actually see the, the room light sort of change, although the, uh, the camera auto contrasts a little bit, which is interesting. And now we're gonna see the same red and green and blue peaks, but they're gonna be a little bit of a different ratio between the three. You can see the blue peak has come down considerably and the red and green have actually gone up a little bit. So these optical enhancement films are doing their job. And finally, the third enhancing film, and you'll see here after we measure the spectrum, um, the blue peak intensity has come down even further and the red and the green intensity have actually gone up a little bit, especially the red, um, which is the farthest out peak around 630 nanometers or so. Um, so now we have a nice mixture of red, green, and blue, which is what you need in the backlight unit of a TV. So now as we remove these three optical films again, uh, the two enhancing films, the quantum dot film, and then we're also going to show here taking off the diffusing layer. That's a very thick plastic film. And here are all the LEDs in the backlight unit. So this is a full array local dimming TV. You can see here the thick plastic diffuser, the LED array, and the standoffs to keep the uh, diffuser away. And there's an individual LED. There are 180 individual LEDs here in the backlight unit. And the spec sheet says it's 90, do 90 zones of local dimming. And so these are operating in pairs, which you'll see here as we start to do a local dimming test, um, we're actually feeding in an HDMI signal into this from my laptop. And you can see the, the what should be showing on the TV on the right here on my laptop. And then on the TV, uh, the backlight that would be illuminating the LCD where the LCD is still there uh, but we just have the backlight. So this is how full array local dimming works. And I think this is this is pretty slick. This is interesting to see. You can see that wherever there's really bright spots in the video, you have bright spots on the LCD or on the LEDs. And then we put back on the optical films and I'll show you here the same series of um, images, but with the backlight and the optical films on it. So you don't see individual LEDs anymore. You see kind of a cloud of bright spots, but the LEDs are essentially off on the right side of the picture here until you get an explosion like this. And then the LEDs get very bright. So this gives you enhanced contrast for an LCD. And then we found this uh, very epic snake gameplay um, that was really neat to watch on this local dimming. What's interesting here is you can almost play the game of snake without the LCD here. You can envision it. You can see that following with the, uh, with the LEDs. Um, and also you'll notice at the bottom, the center on the bottom remains lit all the time with the like subscribe button. Um, the YouTube logo in the corner remains lit. And obviously where the snake and the target are remain lit. You can see these are lighting up in pairs. Uh, so it's 180 LEDs and only 90 zones of local dimming. So here's that same, same snake game, but now with the optical films added back to the backlight unit. So with a full LCD, you would see exactly what's on my laptop screen here. But in the absence of that, you're seeing just the LEDs that are driving that LCD. So this should give you a good feel for how a full array local dimming TV works. Now this is only 90 zones. It's not that much. This TV is a couple years old. Uh, newer TVs have a lot more. 
zones of local dimming. Now, just to go one level further, we decided to rip apart this reflector. This is essentially just white plastic film that will bounce any light that comes to it back up towards the front of the TV so it's not wasted. Uh, but it had some really sticky tape on there. Um, but this allowed us to get into the LEDs a little more. I'll show you some, some cool close-up pictures of these LEDs. Now these LEDs are pretty standard in the display industry. Blue LEDs are what have driven the LCD industry in the last decade or more. Um, and they really have become, yeah, so here's a single LED. Uh, that's the lens that helps spread the light out. Uh, and then a single LED emitter. This is really what's driven the LCD industry uh, in the last 20 years or so. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I've got to thank Avantes for the spectrometer. I've got to thank my friend Steve for helping me with that teardown. And I also have a TCL and a Samsung QLED TVs to tear down. So keep your eyes out for a couple more videos. Hit the subscribe button. Leave me some comments if there's anything else you want to see inside the next TVs.